Welcome fellow Brainiacs, it's great to see you. For those new to the channel, my name is Dr. Martin Rutkowski, and I'm an academic neurosurgeon with expertise in brain tumors. Today will be the first of a two-part operative video series on craniotomy for hydrocephalus, also known as water on the brain. In this video, we'll discuss and review the operative steps for a type of hydrocephalus known as obstructive hydrocephalus, in which an area of blockage at the base of the brain in the ventricular system creates a backup of cerebrospinal fluid. In part one, we'll go through a graphical representation of the steps of an operation known as an endoscopic third ventriculostomy, which is a surgery that we perform to relieve this increased pressure inside the brain. This operation was performed for a young man with a deep-seated malignant brain tumor, resulting in outflow tract obstruction and obstructive hydrocephalus. Performing an endoscopic third ventriculostomy involves inserting a small camera through the skull, into the brain, and then finally into an area known as the third ventricle, which is located at the center of the brain. There we create a small hole in the floor or base of the third ventricle to create a new outflow tract for cerebrospinal fluid. For those who want to see the actual operative footage of the case, be sure to check out part two of this video series. But before we continue, if you appreciate the content we have here and want to be part of our growing Brainiac community, don't forget to subscribe. And please do leave a like and comment. I read them all and I love hearing from you guys and getting your feedback. The ventricular system is made up of two lateral ventricles and the third and fourth ventricles. They are the site of the majority of cerebrospinal fluid production in the central nervous system. Problems can arise when there's blockage or narrowing of the cerebral aqueductive sylvius, the connecting tract between the third and fourth ventricles that runs along the back of the brainstem. Blockade here will lead to upstream accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid and increased pressure. An endoscopic third ventriculostomy has a goal of creating a new outflow tract for cerebrospinal fluid. As you can see in this pictorial representation, a frond of tissue known as the choroid plexus, which exists within the ventricles, normally creates cerebrospinal fluid. This circulates throughout the ventricular system, normally exiting from the third to the fourth ventricle through the aqueduct of sylvius. As seen here, blockade of the aqueduct of sylvius, in this case from a tumor, results in cerebrospinal fluid being unable to exit the ventricular system. This creates enlargement of the third and lateral ventricles which can create increased pressure on the brain. With CSF unable to exit the ventricular system, we need a new and novel approach to create an outflow tract for patients such as mine. Enter the endoscopic third ventriculostomy. In this animation, you can see how we use superficial landmarks to determine the best entry point to enter the brain and ultimately the ventricular system. In this case, a vertical incision is made, the skin is retracted, and a drill is brought into the field to perform a small craniotomy known as a burr hole. Once the burr hole is created, we introduce an endoscope or a small camera through a PLOA sheath using neuronavigation. Through that burr hole, we're able to insert the camera into the brain and down into the lateral and ultimately the third ventricle. We pass instruments through the rigid endoscope where we create an opening or an ostomy at the base of the third ventricle. This allows a new outflow tract for cerebrospinal fluid to exit the ventricular system, relieving increased intracranial pressure and offering a final solution for obstructive hydrocephalus. With CSF now able to exit, the ventricles decrease in size and pressure is relieved. An endoscopic third ventriculostomy provides an elegant solution to a difficult problem and proves how in neurosurgery, every millimeter counts.